This is Cameron Chai from azom.com and I'm speaking to Phil Harrop from Scientific Solutions and he's going to tell us about the CETA Dynamic Surface Tensiometer. Okay, thank you Cameron. Um, I'm going to have a, a, a little display here of the uh, um, CETA Surface Tensiometer. This is a dynamic instrument which is different to a static surface tensiometer. Um, basically surface tension has um, different numbers depending on several factors. One of those is the shear that's being applied at the time. Now, if we have a, have a look, we have a, a measurement head here which has a high resolution pressure transducer inside it and we have a pump and control unit uh, with a display here on the, on the right hand side. Basically what it does, uh, the pump pumps air through the measurement head and outer capillary tube here um, and we can see um, periodically there's a bubble that comes out of the, uh, the end of the tube. We measure the pressure inside that bubble as it forms around the end of the tube and releases and the pressure differential we can convert mathematically into, a, into surface tension. Um, so that's basically what the instrument uh, does uh, and on the um, software side of it um, it operates uh, at different bubble lifetimes so we change the rate that the bubbles are being ejected from the uh, capillary tube and measure the surface tension at different rates and that's what we see on this particular graph here. This is one that we cooked earlier and, and I'll explain this um, as we go through the measurement sequence. To run it, all we do in this particular case is click the auto button, we'll open a new window and the instrument will initialise for a few seconds and then it will start its run. And basically what we'll sh we will see, the, the surface tension which is normally 72.8 uh, millinewton metres um, for pure water, which wood, being a Newtonian liquid, would have a straight line right across the graph. Um, we've actually loaded this sample with some surfactant, um, a soap, and so we'll see the surface tension fall down to a, uh, a, some level um, as the, the bubble lifetime here on the x-axis decreases. So um, we just have to wait for the initialisation to, to um, cease. Now if we have a look at the bubbles there at the moment, it's coming out at quite a fast rate. Um, that's equivalent to 30 milliseconds per, per bubble. And as soon as that stabilises at a surface tension, it sets a point on the software over, over here. So that was the first point. It slowed down the bubble rate to a, a slower rate and the surface tension we see is falling falling already. Started out at something like 66 and it's fallen down already to about 40, 48. As that goes on I'll just explain why we do this. Um, this measurement's important for applications like um, high shear um, systems where we have to look at surface tension as a fundamental property. Things like um, inkjet um, inks where the, the ink in the microscopic sense is flowing out of the inkjet at supersonic speeds. Um, the performance of the ink and the way that it actually uh, works when it's coming out of the jet and also striking the paper are largely related to surface tension. So that's a very high shear uh, environment and it doesn't matter what sort of soap or surfactant you have in there, you have to have one that's actually working at the right rate for the particular um, application. So an inkjet um, uh, printer would have to be looking at something that's operating in a very short bubble lifetime up here, would it be trying to get this slope to be as fast as possible um, to actually have a surfactant work within that ink for the inkjet printer. It's no good measuring something out at uh, the longer bubble lifetime and this, this equates to the static lifetime that you would get with a, a Denoy ring or a Wilhelmy plate instrument. Um, they're, they're basically a stagnant measurement or a static measurement 
we need to look at the surface tension at the high shear rates up here. So for things which require high shear measurements of surface tension, um, we have to look at this, this particular part here. And for the really um, uh, important uh, applications in that area, what we're really trying to do is to drive this part of the curve back down towards the origin of the graph to get a, a sharp um, uh, fall off in surface tension at the beginning and a, and a low level near the end of the graph. So uh, that's simply how it works and, and hopefully that's explained a little bit of why we, why we wish to do that measurement. And what other industries is it relevant to? Things like people making detergents and things like that? People making cleaning detergents, people who actually make surfactants um, use this because they want to tailor their surfactants to a particular type of application. It may be that those surfactants are used in the plating baths industry uh, for um, cleaning the um, metal parts that go into a plating bath. What about other, other coating industries and things like that? Paints are another, uh, another industry which these, uh, these things should be used routinely, um, particularly spray paints, things where there's a high activity in the, uh, in the nozzle area for, for a spray paint or for spray painting applications in the automotive industry um, where the formulation of the, uh, of the paint's very important to get a clean spray out of the nozzle. So anything which has a, a s um, susceptibility to surface tension in a high shear environment, a dynamic surface tensiometer is the correct way to, to measure that particular parameter. All right, Phil, mm. thanks very much for telling us about the CEDAR dynamic surface tensiometer. Thanks, Cameron. It's a pleasure.